Hello, and welcome to our September 11th commemoration ceremony. I'd like to thank everyone for attending this important event and extend my deepest gratitude to CUNY Chancellor Felix Matos Rodriguez, John Jay Foundation board member and alumna, the Honorable Rosanna Rosado, the FDNY, the NYPD, and all of our community members and partners who devoted their time and creative energy to this milestone remembrance. 20 years ago, nearly 3,000 lives were cruelly taken from us. We senselessly lost fathers and mothers, sons and daughters, and even children as young as three years old. As a New York City college focused on educating firefighters, law enforcement officers, and emergency medical professionals, the toll on our community was steep. John Jay lost 67 heroes that day. They saw lives in peril and without hesitation made the ultimate sacrifice to try to save them. Two decades later, we are still reeling from the emotional, psychological, and physical reverberance of that horrendous attack. Countless live responders and civilians have perished or are facing life-threatening diseases because of the toxic air that surrounded them. The night before September 11th, FDNY Fire Marshal Ronald Buka, an alumnus of John Jay, called his son at college. Their last conversation was like so many conversations parents around the country have with their college-aged children. Study hard, stay safe, and see you on Thanksgiving. But Ron never saw his son again. On 9-11, wearing full gear, Ron climbed all the way to the 79th floor of the South Tower. He was determined and focused on assisting civilians and fighting the fire at the point of impact. According to his son, Ron's body was found by a stairwell. His coat was covering the woman that he tried to save. There are no words that can ever ease the pain of their absence, but through their service and our actions, we can honor the legacy of the lives that we lost. For many of our students, September 11th is a sad day in history, but not a lived experience. They don't remember the smoke, dust, and debris that lingered in the air. They don't recall the fear, uncertainty, and sense of loss felt in the aftermath. They didn't witness the outpouring of love and support from all corners of the globe. But every John Jay student, faculty, and staff, and alumni member is inextricably linked to the 67 heroes that we lost that day. By studying how to protect our country, we're honoring their legacy. By keeping our community safe, we're honoring their legacy. By offering a helping hand to those in need, we're honoring their legacy. As we mark the 20th anniversary of this tragic day, it's also imperative that we learn from survivors within our community. David Chung, a John Jay alumnus and current White Plains Safety Commissioner, worked for the NYPD for over 22 years. On September 11th, he was the commander of New York City's Organized Crime Control Bureau, and he happened to be in downtown Manhattan. David heard the thunderous boom when the first plane hit the North Tower. He saw pieces of the airplane fall to the ground and the top of the tower light up like a match. He grabbed panicked civilians and yelled at them to run north. Without protective gear or clothing, David ran into the South Tower to help evacuate the building. He made it to the 12th floor where he found a badly burned woman. At the behest of a young firefighter headed up the stairwell, David assisted the woman to the lobby. As he held her arm, they staggered toward the flashing lights of an ambulance. She cried for her niños. In a matter of moments, the floor opened up like a sinkhole and the suction pulled the woman from his grip. David fell between two concrete barriers that most likely saved his life. In 20 years, a day hasn't gone by without David thinking about that day, the woman he couldn't save, or the young firefighter he watched go up the stairwell. He's suffering from PTSD, survivor's guilt, and cancer. What David wants us to know is how important that day is 
to the history of the United States. It forever changed our world. Now it's our duty to remember the people we lost and our obligation to ensure that it never happens again. Thank you. On this 20th anniversary week of the terrible events of September 11th, 2001, the university joins President Mason and the John Jay College family in remembering those who lost their lives that day, particularly the 67 members of the John Jay community, most of whom were uniformed first responders. We honor the students, faculty, and staff who participated in the rescue and recovery efforts at Ground Zero, particularly those who suffered grave illness as a result, in many cases, years later. In a sense, all of us who bore witness that day were profoundly impacted by the tragic attacks. The university marks this week with great sadness. So much was taken from us on September 11th. We reflect on the humanity and resolve display by so many of our community members in the aftermath of that tragic day. From the student support and counseling staff who comforted so many in their campus communities, to the educators who help us develop a sense of clarity about what happened. This becomes especially important with each passing year as we work to educate a generation of students for whom 9-11 is not a lived memory. Universities are, as then Chancellor Goldstein said on the first anniversary of September 11th, places where we can begin to shed light on the incomprehensible. Universities are also places to give comfort and to heal. In your classrooms and hallways at this very moment are New Yorkers who are saving lives and healing and giving comfort. Please appreciate them. And be reminded that at John Jay and at CUNY, our commitment to looking after each other and to building a better society can never be extinguished. I can't believe it's 20 years. Some people ask me, well, what does it feel like? I say, sometimes it feels like it happened 50 years ago. And then some days it feels like it happened just yesterday. And that's the range of emotions that we have. You know, from the, you know, it was a horrific day, but there were so many good things that came out of that day in these past 20 years. Well, I hear 20 years, it just seems like I don't feel older than that. And maybe that's just a, you know, when you start getting older, you don't, you don't want to feel older. But I don't. It doesn't seem like it was that far away, but then, you know, when I talk to my kids, they're learning about it in history class, like they weren't even alive. I was 17 years old on September 11, 2001, and I remember walking into my house that day, to my parents' house, and I saw my mom in the kitchen, and one of the first things she said to me was, your cousin Joseph, nobody's heard from him yet. We don't know if he's safe. And, um, you know, my heart skipped a beat and I thought, oh my goodness, I hope he's okay. I hope he made it out and he just couldn't get to a phone or maybe he's in a hospital and we haven't heard from him yet because he can't talk or something. When I woke up that morning, it was a beautiful September day, warm sun, never in my wildest dreams that I think it would be one of the worst days of my life. The sheriff's office operates in all five boroughs, so getting everyone in from the particular field offices to come in and uh, go down to the World Trade Center, you know, see what could be done, if anything could be done, if you could help someone. Um, but the fire and the people, even with the firemen going up, it there was little you could do except comfort the people or try and bring them, those who had escaped from the two towers and then you just watched it burn. We were very appreciative when the Family Assistance Center at Pier 94 opened because of the work I do at Safe Horizon. It was an opportunity to be present with first responders, other services, other organizations. So the Pier, the Family Assistance Center was open for anyone. So if you lost your job as a result of 9-11, you couldn't return back home. You just couldn't. You were injured, your loved one was missing, or your loved one had been killed. 
and we were all learning from each other because um, there wasn't like a how-to manual is but i think the beauty what i do appreciate is the collaborative piece everyone coming together under one roof and supporting each other because i remember when we were on the army you, and maybe this is just me like you could still smell there was a smell in the air so it was resonant it was still present and you smelled it but then you realize i still have a, i still have work to do i joined nypd in 1991 and in 2001 I was assigned to the Missing Person Squad. Myself and the team, Missing Person Squad personnel, were at uh, the morgue processing the remains and trying to bring solace to the family members uh, through the identification of those remains. I arrived before the first tower went down with a couple of detectives, and we went to a area, a triage area, where there were a lot of medical staff behind one more financial center. So we across the street, one of the towers, but we were behind. The initial shock and anxiety, and then an understanding of what was going on in terms of the, the building falling down, that was uh, a traumatic experience. Reconnecting with my detectives, finding them again, we, we reconvened to figure out how we were going to do our jobs, uh, which was still to uh, work on, on the collecting of uh, the casualties and, and, and identifying those individuals. I work at the New York City Medical Examiner's Office and we are tasked with um, investigating cases of sudden, unexplained or suspicious deaths. But a big part of our operations is still dedicated to World Trade Center identifications. A lot of people don't realize that. We have people on our staff at the medical examiner's office who were there that day, who barely escaped with their lives. And we have people like me who lost family members that day. My cousin Joseph and Chandia, he has not been identified. And I think that, that really resonates with the families when I share that personal story with them because they understand that I know what it feels like at least on some level, uh, to, to have that pain of not really knowing what happened to my loved one that day. And they know that me and my family knows on some level what they're going through. There's so many different changes that we made, not only in, in our job in the FDNY, but not only in NYPD, but throughout the world, not even the country, throughout the world, and the way we operate, the procedures, the tools, the equipment. Um, there's so many changes that have taken place uh, for the good, naturally so that we don't have that same event ever happen again. The, the thing that I always tell people about is, it's all about relationships. And we learned after September 11th that things we could have done a little bit better. And, and that's what we try to stress is that relationships with people and other organizations is so important. The civilians that were in those buildings and what they did, you know, some of those stories can't be told because we don't know what they were. But some stories that can be told were people that stayed with their counter workers and stayed with their counterparts that weren't as mobile as they were and helped them get out. And some never made it out because they stayed with their counterparts because they couldn't get out. And, and that bravery and heroism that was on display that day is just nothing short of amazing. That was the beauty of the tragedy. Without question, everyone responded. We didn't even have to ask. It was, what do you need? We'll be there immediately. And that's one of the good feelings. And during this chaotic past four years, I hold on to that, because I know we're, we're all capable of that. Ironically, I'm teaching an emergency management class now. So I've almost come full circle, and I'm able to relate and pull in real life examples of things that I experienced when I was in the FBI. I think certainly uh, there's a responsibility when you have been given experiential knowledge to uh, use that information in a way that uh, helps society. Kids in this building are our future. You know, I was in this building in 1976. From 74 to 76 when I graduated. Did I ever think I was going to become the fire commissioner of New York City? I was a firefighter. I was just a firefighter. And then I became the commissioner. What I learned here from my colleagues carried me through my whole job. It's, uh, it's, it's interesting to have been part of a piece of history that I wish would have never happened. And let it be.
On this 20th anniversary, I have the privilege of reciting the names and the work affiliations of those whom John Jay lost on September 11, 2001, and now our honor roll. Ignatius Adanga, the New York Metropolitan Transportation Council. Brian Ahern, FDNY. Gerard Barbera, FDNY. Frank Bonomo, FDNY. Michael Boyle, FDNY. Michael Brennan, FDNY. Peter Brennan, FDNY. Patrick Brown, FDNY. Ronald Buka, FDNY. William Berkey Jr., FDNY. Michael Camarada, FDNY. Michael Carroll, FDNY. Vernon Cherry, FDNY. Michael Clark, FDNY. John Collins, FDNY. John Coughlin, NYPD. James Coyle, FDNY. Robert Crawford, FDNY. Scott Davidson, FDNY. Dennis Devlin, FDNY. Jerome Dominguez, NYPD. Kevin Donnelly, FDNY. Stephen Driscoll, FDNY. Gerard Duffy, FDNY. Fanny Espinoza, Cantor Fitzgerald. Michael Esposito, FDNY. Robert Evans, FDNY. John Fanning, FDNY. Thomas Farino, FDNY. Terence Farrell, FDNY. Andrew Fredericks, FDNY. Thomas Gambino Jr., FDNY. Marilyn Garcia, Marsh and McLennan. Edward Garrity, FDNY. John Giordano, FDNY. Sean Hanley, FDNY. Terence Hatton, FDNY. John Hefferman, FDNY. Ronnie Henderson, FDNY. Walter Hines, FDNY. Carl Joseph, FDNY. Michael Kiefer, FDNY. Thomas Kennedy, FDNY. Ronald Kerwin, FDNY. Michael Lyons, FDNY. Joseph Levy, FDNY. Joseph Maloney, FDNY. Peter Martin, FDNY. Robert McMahon, 
FDNY. Charles Mills, the New York State Department of Taxation and Finance. Robert Minera, FDNY. Dennis Mojica, FDNY. John Moran, FDNY. Robert Nagel, FDNY. William O'Keefe, FDNY. Oriel Palmer, FDNY. Philip S. Petty, FDNY. Maria Ramirez, Langan Engineering and Environmental Services. Digna Rivera Costanza, Marsh and McLennan. Jacqueline P. Sanchez, Cantor Fitzgerald. Leon Smith Jr., FDNY. Kevin Smith, FDNY. Walwyn Stewart, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. Santos Valentin, NYPD. John Vigiano, FDNY. Lawrence Virgilio, FDNY. Edward White, FDNY. Many of the professionals and volunteers who work the rescue and recovery effort in the days, hours, and months following the attack have fallen ill and too many have passed from illnesses caused by exposure to toxins. We pay tribute to those John Jay family members for their sacrifices. May their collective spirit and dedication to public service, safety, and the greater good continue to shine in our students, the next generation of leaders. On the morning of September 11, 2001, I arose and dressed for what would be a great and historic day for New York's Latino community. I was publisher and CEO of El Diario La Prensa, the nation's oldest Spanish language newspaper. That Tuesday was primary day in New York City and a Puerto Rican leader from the Bronx named Freddie Ferrer was expected to win the primary election for mayor. I was dressing for that joyous occasion and also that evening, I was scheduled to attend a watch party for the Latin Grammys, which were going to be broadcast from Los Angeles, California. It was the second year of that ceremony. I don't know why I have saved that purple summer dress and sweater for 20 years. It reminds me that we never know what the day holds for us when we leave home in the morning. The attacks on the World Trade Center altered Latino history in New York City and deeply affected our immigrant communities. In some ways, the event gave rise to an anti-immigrant sentiment in the country and we are still recovering from that today. You, the students of John Jay College and CUNY at large are thankfully changing that narrative now, but it has been a struggle. At El Diario, our reporters worked with families of victims, people who worked at the towers, but who were undocumented. It was as if they had never existed. And the challenges for those families were excruciating. First, to help them find their loved ones, and then to move forward without them. Many of those who perished were the breadwinners in those households. And there were also many Latino heroes in the rescue efforts, 9-11 operators, police officers, EMTs. We featured them in a 10th anniversary, uh, 10th anniversary issue of the paper, which is in the archives at Columbia University. As we honor the victims and the heroes this year, it is important to remember that every day as we leave our homes, no matter what we're wearing, we have a chance to make the world a better place. We have the privilege to be kind and helpful and to make our people proud. En este mes de septiembre, cuando rendimos homenaje a las víctimas y los héroes de 9-11, es importante recordar que cada día que se nos permite salir de casa, tenemos una oportunidad para hacer el mundo un sitio mejor. Tenemos el privilegio, la bendición para hacer bien, ayudar al prójimo y enorgullecer a nuestra comunidad. May our memories fuel our resolve to honor those 
who came before us and left too soon. Thank you. 